Hello everyone, today we're getting back on the alternator to motor conversion project that I've been working on for quite some time now and I've had a lot of questions about it and I have come up with the absolute dirt simple way to do it. Now if you look back at my previous videos you'll see everything you have to do to the actual alternator to convert it into a motor so we won't get into that but we're going to be getting into the control side of it. Now what I have right here, this is your typical um, electric bike or scooter, go-kart, whatever electric um, brushless controller. This is a 48 volt to 60 volt unit. Um, it's rated at 1500 watts. It's about the largest one I could find and this was really cheap, come from China. So I will be running in it at 48 volts. Now the other thing I've done is the field coil the alternator. You have to have a 12 volt source into it. And right now, just for demonstration purposes, I have it hooked up to my 12 volt power supply. Now what I will be powering this with is two six cell lithium batteries for now. Um, you could use lead acid if you really wanted to use some large batteries or uh, just about anything you come up to you make your own pack at 18650s even if you want to do but I have these here lithium packs here for uh, model airplanes and I will be using two of them hooked in the series to be running 48 volts out of them for this now one thing I made is my batteries here, they have these XT60 connectors, is I made this little Y connector here. That way I can run the two batteries in series and then have my 48 volt output on it. So I will go ahead and plug it into my batteries. I have 48 volts here right now. And then for demonstration purposes, I have fixed up this little banana plug set up here there we go looks good and then this will hook in to the battery packs now with a setup like this this has some fairly large capacitors in it so you will see a spark in the plug Let's see if we can catch that there we go now I had a little output on my controller that I got 48 volts out of and I just hooked the LED with a res with a um, proper resistor up just so I kind of have a visual looking that hey I have power to it right now now the connections you need to think of with your controller one of these e-bike controllers is it has to be one for a brushless motor so you'll have three large connections going to the motor are, are three connections on the motor you will have on the positive side from your batteries you'll have a large wire that's your positive side and then you'll have another smaller positive wire that's for like a you to switch it on and off without having to disconnect the batteries and then of course you'll have your large ground wire now a lot of these controllers I've been looking around they are all wired differently now mine I have this plug here with three wires. It's got a blue, a brown, and a black. On this here, all the black wires are ground. And what this is, is kind of a speed select. So with mine here, with this little jumper that came with it, with the brown, with, I'm, excuse me, the black and the blue connect together, that's a high speed. And then the brown and black that is low speed and then when the plug no jumpers on any of the wires that's kind of a mid speed so I'll be running it at high speed for now another thing you will have is the throttle there'll be three wires for it you'll have a positive and negative and then you'll have a signal wire in my case it'd be negative black positive red and the signal wire which is green on this and I have that connected up to a potentiometer now on the potentiometer you have your positive and negatives on the outsides and then your signal wires on the middle. 
and pretty much that is the only connections you need to worry about all these other ones are for like hall effect sensors for like the actual e-bike motors and stuff that has the hall effect sensors in them we do not need to worry about this on that and then many of these other wires are different options um, if you get a controller hopefully you'll have instructions that explain all these connections so when you have all that figured out, you're set up and ready to go. Got all your connections made. Now one thing on the potentiometer, I'm using a 10K potentiometer. Now looking online, most of the throttles for e-bikes and whatnot, they use a 5K. Now the 10K works just fine. 5K would be even better. Or you can just get you one of the actual throttles for like the bicycles or whatnot. So to get this going, I need to turn my power supply on. So now I have 12 volts going through the field coil on this. And I have detached my power connection. And then here we go. I got some tape on the shaft. And it works really well. It's actually got some pretty high speed to it. Now another thing, going back to the wiring connections, another one I forgot about. Um, with this particular controller and maybe several others, there are two wires that if they are jumped, it reverses the motor. So if you're doing something like a go-kart or something that you wanted to power with one of these motors, which I could see very easily done, that way you could have a switch for reversing it. But as you can see, turn the potentiometer. And I mean, these motors can just, ah, I can't stop it with my hands. And that is the lowest speed it's running at right now, at 48 volts. We can turn it all the way up. That's full speed. And there's absolutely no way I could possibly stop this with my hand. So I think the next thing I need to do is figure out something put this on I am thinking doing a electric bike conversion powering it with this very alternator um, to get into some of the many many questions I've had I have had tons and tons of questions one very common question is can you power this directly from the batteries without any kind of speed controller at all and the answer to that is no this is basically a three phase ac motor at this point in time so you do have to have some form of control for that to do the switching of the phases to control the motor another question is is can this generate power as long and and also you know create power so it's like a bike or something um, you're riding along and when you stop the motor can you have it generate power you know from the freewheeling coasting of the bike or whatnot some controllers will do that mine right here does not um, as for generating power with this motor for other projects, you know, whether it be, I don't know, I think somebody asked me one time if they could use this for a windmill or something. The only thing about that is, is how much power are you creating to the amount of power that you are using through the field coil. Now, if you was able to turn this into a permanent magnet and get rid of the field coil, then I'm gonna say, yeah, you could probably do something like that. Let me think some of the other questions I have had. I've had many questions of how many RPMs, how much power does this create? As of right now, I do not know. I mean, I, I, you saw their very, very low speed. I cannot stop it with my hands. Um, let's see, other questions I've had. Um, 
voltage? What kind of voltage can you run this at? I have no idea what the maximum voltage on this could be. You might be able to run 300 volts through this. I have no idea. It depends on your controller. Like this one here is 48 to 60 volts. I have saw some go up in these probably 70 something volts controllers. Um, the 48 works really well because I can run it off of two six cell lithium packs. Each one of them are 24, so together they're 48. So as for the maximum voltage on this, I have no idea. I'm figuring probably the higher the voltage, the more power you're going to get out of it. So it will all depend on your controller. So all in all, with all the things I've done using the RC airplane speed controller, using the Arduino control, yes, that was a little overcomplicated. Yeah, I get a lot of questions. Can that be simplified? Yes, I had ideas there of being able to expand upon it. So I could add like an LCD readout or something like that. But with this bike controller, this is just too simple for this. I mean, it is downright simple. The hardest part of it is figuring out what this rat nest of wires is. And then all you have to have is a 12 volt power supply to the field coil and you're golden. You're, you're up and running once you do the few modifications that you have to do to this, which is, that's nothing. That's simple, simple stuff too. So, I think one of these controllers from China, yeah, possibly 20 bucks. An alternator, you can get these everywhere for 10 bucks all day long. You can have quite a powerful brushless motor for some sort of project, whether it be bike, go-kart, whatever. So in the future, I will see what I can do. I gotta find a bicycle. I would like to find an older single speed, probably like a 24 or 26 inch bike that I'd like to convert to electric with this. So I will keep my eyes out on that and as soon as I find something, I will get to working on that and I will cover that project on my channel very well. So hopefully this, I was able to answer some questions to give you some information on the absolute easiest way I've found the power of one of these. So until next time, get out there and just go make it. Thanks for watching.